Hey guys, what is going on? My name is Frostify and today I'm going to be giving you some tips and tricks on how you can get inspiration as a graphic designer. I've gathered six tips to display to you guys in this video to hopefully give you guys a little bit of a drive and honestly just guide you in the right direction to get inspiration correctly from graphic designs. We'll be talking about communicating with other artists, looking at portfolios and other things like that. These are also going to be some varying tips too, so it may actually help you guys out and you may learn something from this video. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video and start covering these tips. Coming in at our first tip in this video, we have to use mood boards. Now, if you actually use Behance, there's a section for mood boards, but you can basically create your own in any program or anything like that. If you are in fact using Behance, you can come over here and click the mood board section. And as you guys can see, I have a ton of mood boards to help me with inspiration and other things like that. Basically a mood board is a visual presentation of a whole bunch of people's work to kind of give you guys some inspiration and overall kind of set a drive for a project, if you will. So as you guys can see, I actually have a bunch of different categories. I have layouts, project layouts, esports, animation, and motion, and these are all set to give me inspiration for a specific thing. If you guys click on one of these, like social media, for example, you will see a whole bunch of social media projects. And as you guys can see, you could also share mood boards with your friends and your other design colleagues, which is super, super dope. And yeah, so that could actually help a ton. So in order to actually create a mood board, you want to find a piece that you would like to start off with. For this, you could either go to your For You page or anything like that. And for this video specifically, we'll actually click on my homie Dustin's profile, and this is how you guys create a mood board. So say you actually want to create a mood board for merch designs. Dustin over here has an apparel project that is super, super dope, and I want to get inspiration from it. So what you would do next is you would click on the actual product, and there's four different options on the side here. You can see there's a follow button, there's a tools used button, there's a save button, and there's an appreciate button. For one, I'm going to show some love for Dustin and appreciate his project, and two, I'm going to click the button that says save, and it is going to say add to mood board. Once you click that, it'll say add to mood board. And as you guys can see, there's a ton of presets here. However, we are going to be creating a new one. So if you want to create a new one, just click down here, new mood board, you click that. And this is where you actually give your mood board a name. So in this case, we are creating a mood board for actually getting inspiration for apparel. So I would be naming the project either merch designs or well, apparel. So with that being said, now that you have it named, all you have to do is click create and you are good to go. And then as you guys can see, it is officially there, merch designs, and you want to click save. Instead of actually going to see it now, we are going to be adding another project just so you guys can see it in full effect and other things like that. So you want to click out and you want to find another project that you want to add to your mood board. In this case, you can just go up and you can basically just search whatever you're looking for, merch design, headers, anything like that. We are going to be using Nox's. By the way, Dustin's and Nox's Behance will be linked in the description below. Go show some love on their projects and just overall appreciate them. They are absolutely talented and they are killing the game. So for this project, we are also going to appreciate it and we are going to click add to mood board. And in this case, we already have our mood board created. So we're just going to click merch designs and click save. Or you can go to your Behance profile and click mood boards. And as you guys can see, the merch designs mood board is officially there and ready to go. Now, you're probably wondering, Frostify, what if I do not exactly want people seeing my mood boards and other things like that? I've got a simple answer for you. You basically just click the mood board, and once you do that, you can click edit mood board, and you've got a few little options here. For one, you can make it private, which is what I personally recommend to kind of keep your Behance profile not that cluttered. So I'm going to make this mood board private. And on top of that, you can add co-owners. So for example, if anybody wanted to be on the mood board together, you can just simply look up their name and they'll come up. So say I wanted to share this with Dustin and I add him and then I click save and Dustin will get a notification on his end that actually says that says, you know, Frostify has requested to add you to this mood board and other things like that, which is super helpful. Do bear in mind though that anybody that you do share the mood board with actually has full edit access and can remove projects add projects and other things like that so maybe before sharing it with one another you all agree to just keep things the way they are and kind of just partner up when you add projects together and stuff like that but the reason why i actually love using mood boards so much is because it has everything in one space and you could go project to project now there's actually a mood board that i have called project layouts this is a prime example of what i'm talking about everything together um, it gives me a good idea of how covers are utilized and other things like that. And if you click on a project, we're going to be using Japrit's. By the way, his Behance will also be linked in the description. And as you can see, I just go through layouts and get some inspiration. That is one way that you can get inspiration as a graphic designer. Tip number one, utilize mood boards to the best of their ability and overall to their max ability because guys, I'm telling you, they are super, super helpful. 
Coming in at our second tip, it is a very, very simple one and also very, very broad and bland, but tip number two is a start a plan. I know this tip is very, very open-ended, but in all honesty, one of the reasons why designers lose inspiration so much is because they don't think deep enough into a plan. And this can be anything from not exactly knowing what to create to kind of contemplating your skills, other things like that. With that being said, one of the things that can absolutely help you guys out when it comes to getting inspiration is simple. Create a plan, kind of assess whether or not you want to create a header a stream package who you want to create it for you can also look into like kind of pushing your boundaries and doing things that you normally wouldn't do like an esports package that you haven't attempted or a logo design that you haven't attempted one of the things that i have personally found that has given me maximum inspiration is when i'm trying something new and it honestly comes out pretty good you guys would honestly be surprised how much you are capable of but you just don't try it honestly if you go out and you try it and you explore new things i promise you you will not be disappointed another thing that also helps with the starting a plan and honestly works hand in hand with becoming more organized overall is getting a specific calendar or a notepad. I recently bought myself a calendar and a notepad to do things like write down to-do lists and mark days that like client projects are due and just things in general. But like I said previously, this is not the only thing that it can be used for. You can do things like kind of create a plan for your projects, kind of get inspiration and just overall experiment with things. So that's going to conclude tip number two. Make sure to build out a plan or assess a plan. This can really, really be be helpful for your organization if you get a notebook or a calendar to write things down on and just stay on top of things. For our third tip in today's video, it is going to be to talk with others. Now, this could mean anything from your inspirations to other designers to, I mean, your friends, family, anyone really. One of the main sources of building up that creativity and that inspiration is building off each other's ideas. I know I personally message people a ton, whether or not if it's for opinions, second thoughts, um, do's and don'ts, anything like that really. And this actually helps me build up inspiration because nine times out of 10, these amazing creators end up pitching ideas to me, which allows me to build off of them and create an amazing creation of my own, which can be the exact same for you guys. Make sure you go out and you talk to other creators. My DMs are always open if you need someone to talk to you about some things and yeah, talk to friends, family, creators, anyone you really want to. Because not only does this tip help with networking and building friendships, but it also gives you the opportunity to get second opinions on your stuff, which can especially help if you're trying to see a view from a different perspective. With all that being said, that has been tip number three. Make sure to talk with others, network and build those relationships. That way you can build off of ideas and create something of your own that is super dope and super original. Next tip in this video is to read and research. This doesn't necessarily have to be exactly about the type of designs you're making, but maybe research things about how to build your brand, how to grow as a graphic designer, how to get clients, other things like that. Personally, after I'm done reading or researching, I actually get a ton of inspiration to go out and try new things because I'm just overall curious on how it'll turn out. And don't think that this is only about graphic design. There is a ton of books out there that can give you inspiration to just do what you love. And I'm going to give you guys a few examples of those. Keep in mind, these don't always have to be books. You can actually go and look up video lectures, video speeches, anything that you honestly like can obtain the most information with. So with that being said, one of the most effective public speakers, in my opinion, is Gary Vaynerchuk. Not only does he not only target the actual graphic design community, Community, but he does many things like he teaches entrepreneurship, he teaches business plans, he teaches business goals. He is the prime example of someone who is an amazing public speaker and an amazing motivational speaker. I'll have a link down below to his channel as well if you guys want to check him out. I promise you after you look at some of his videos or read some of his books that are available on the market, you will be very inspired to do what you love, whether it be graphic design, video editing, or anything like that. In conclusion, it is very important to note that knowledge is going to be your best friend when it comes to getting inspiration because without it, you can't build off on ideas and you can't do anything outside of the box. So whether or not you watch Gary Vaynerchuk, that's a up to you but it's very important that you go out and you watch some motivational videos just to give you an idea of what you can do next and other things like that so with that being said tip number four read and research make sure you read and you get that knowledge whether or not you're interested in leadership whether or not you're interested in getting inspiration or just anything in general Coming in at tip number five is probably one of the most important tips I'm going to display in this video, and that is self-care and taking a break. It's very important that you actually take a step back if you're feeling like it's too frustrating to try to get inspiration and just overall take a break. One of the things a lot of designers face nowadays is creative block, which I will have a video on in the near future. But creative block is basically where you kind of have this mental block and you don't exactly know what to do next, whether or not it's for your career, the design you're trying to make, or anything like that. The best thing I could advise for that specific 
specific topic is self-care. Make sure you're drinking a lot of water. Make sure you're taking breaks from your computer and not over exhausting yourself. One of the things that I have personally had to learn the hard way is if you push creative block, it only gets worse and worse and you end up being in it for a long time. It's very important that you take a step back and you kind of gather yourself and reevaluate what you're doing just to be sure that you are comfortable with what you're doing and you're just gathering your thoughts. That will bring the most maximum creativity and the maximum inspiration you are looking for. And if all else fails, the most important thing I am going to tell you guys in this video is it is absolutely okay to take a break. Like I said, the more you push it, the harder it will be to get out of it. So if you just take a step back and stay away from designing a little bit, maybe play some video games and do what you want to do. Nine times out of 10, that creativity will smack you in the face and you will just have the sudden urge to design and you will get up and create a banger. That is going to conclude tip number five, stepping back and kind of taking a break and also admiring self-care. You really, really need to keep an eye on that as it's one of the most important aspects to designing and keeping that creativity drive going. The last and final tip that I'm actually going to be labeling as a bonus tip is tip number six, and that is do what you like. Do not feel pressured to do what you don't like in any certain circumstance. One of the things I will note is that you probably work your best when you're creating something that you are passionate about, something that you are very familiar with, and something that you just overall want to create. So with that being said, one of the biggest things that you can do to get inspiration to create a piece or move forward on your business plan, ladies and gentlemen, do what you like. If you like creating headers, go create headers. If you like doing NFT work, go do NFT work. Do what you like as a graphic designer. Because in the end, one of the biggest things that you can do to drive that inspiration and drive that creativity is creating something that you 100% are down to make. However, one of the biggest challenges of being a graphic designer is being able to turn ideas into reality, so do not leave that idea in the dark completely. But in terms of doing what you like, I'm talking about when you have those opportunities to create a piece that you post on the timeline that you want all of your followers to see and all of your potential clientele to see. This will only work for some people as other people really like working with kind of like a set of guidelines and other things like that. And that's perfectly okay because in the end, everybody has their own learning styles and everybody gets inspiration differently. Whether or not it's from looking at mood boards, looking at portfolios, watching motivational videos like I stated earlier, and just anything in general. But in the end, what's most important is that you stick with what you are most comfortable with, whether or not it be a routine, whether or not it be the people you talk to or anything like that. That way you can keep that creativity and that drive going regardless of what you do. I believe that's going to wrap up today's video. I hope those tips helped you guys out and I hope it gave you an idea of how you can collect and get inspiration as a graphic designer. Please bear in mind that these are all methods that I personally use to get inspiration as a graphic designer, but you guys are free to use whatever you're comfortable with because in the end, like I said, all that matters is that you get inspiration comfortably and you do what you want to do. Without further ado, if you guys have any questions at all or simply simply want more methods on how to get inspiration or want a second opinion, you guys can always message me on Twitter. The link will be down in the description and also appearing on the screen. Every single link will be down in the description below. For example, the original Gary Vaynerchuk video and also the portfolios that I used to demonstrate the first tip. So with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching the video. This has been Frostify and I will see you guys next Friday. Peace out.